iOS 16.1 is a much bigger update than you think with more than 30 new features and changes. So in this video, you're going to see those new features and we're also going to discuss the performance, battery life, and if you should update or not. If you take a look at the size, this could range anywhere from just under one gigabyte to more than five gigabytes. It just depends on the version you're coming from and the device that you're using. And the modem firmware has also been updated on all devices. So that should lead to improved cell connectivity. All right. So now what's new here? Here in iOS 16.1. And the first thing is that the battery percentage in the status bar is now available for all devices that did not have this feature previously. So before, only select devices were able to see the battery percentage up in the status bar, but now that is available for all devices with a notch. And you'll also notice that the battery glyph icon now dynamically changes with the battery percentage. So you can see I'm at 81% and you can see behind the numbers, the graphic actually changes. So just to compare, here is iOS 16.0.3, the latest version before this on the left hand side. And you can see at 92%, it still looks like we're at 100%. So now that adjusts and it will change colors dynamically as well, depending on your background color. So the font has also been adjusted. You will notice that the font inside of the battery right there is a little bit larger on 16.1 compared to previous versions. You may have also noticed that the SOS and the status bar has a new look as well. Also on the lock screen, you're now able to see your battery percentage once again above the clock right there. So that was removed for whatever reason, but now it has been added back to the lock screen. And speaking of the lock screen, if we have to press on our lock screen here and go to customize, you can see that we now have a much improved flow because we don't have to change something on the lock screen to get to our home screen customization. And also if we wanted to change something very minor on the lock screen, like a widget, and we tap on done before you would be forced to either set as wallpaper pair or customize home screen. You cannot just change one at a time. Well, that changes with 16.1 because now you get the option to customize the wallpaper on your lock screen or your home screen. You don't have to go through both. That was a very redundant step before, but now if you want to customize your home screen, you could do that right there. And then also if you wanted to change something on your lock screen, like a simple widget, if you tap on lock screen, you change a widget right there, you tap on done, you don't get the prompt to set as a wallpaper pair. You don't have to go through that very redundant process anymore. And if you're a fan of the depth effect on your lock screen wallpaper, where you can kind of cover up the clock with your photo, you can see that now in 16.1, you're able to cover up a little bit more of that that clock than you were previously allowed to. So that's about as much as you could do on previous versions. And now on 16.1, you can pretty much cover an entire number if you wanted to. If we head into our settings and go to the wallpaper section, you can see that we're now able to see all of our previously created lock screen and home screen setups right here. So we can see all of these. We do also have the option up top to set that as our current home screen and lock screen. Also down here, we have add new wallpaper before it was its own little section. Now it's this little button right here and the customized buttons also look a lot better. Now they're inside of the wallpapers and have a transparent look to them. Whereas before they had this little gray look and they were below the wallpapers. Also, if you have an iPhone 14 pro reachability support is not only easier to invoke, you can see sometimes on iOS 16, it would tap on different app icons instead of going into reachability, but also we now have the dynamic Island in the reachability view. Whereas before, we did not. You could see reachability still had the dynamic island all the way up at the top of the screen, which completely defeats the purpose of having reachability enabled. This update also adds third party support for the live activities feature. So live activities, of course, is that interactive notification that can dynamically display real time information from applications without needing to open up that application directly. So for example, the timer and the clock, you can see that shows up in the dynamic island on 14 pro devices and also down here on the lock screen and it shows up in real time right there that is a live activity well now it's been added for third party applications as well now some of these applications will need an update for it to roll out but you will be seeing this for applications like Uber, Starbucks, the TV application, and I actually have a test one right here that I can show you. So I just created a test in this third party application and you can see that now on the lock screen, it shows that live activity right there. And also for the 14 Pro series, you can see it showing up in the dynamic island. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro series, you will also notice that this update adds a more prominent outline to the dynamic island when there is a live activity going on. So you can see it's orange, 
for the timer that's going on right now. If I were to play music, you can see it is white around that and then orange around the timer. You may have seen this before, but now with 16.1, it's more prominent and it shows up only when you're on a dark background. The iCloud shared library is one of the big iOS 16 features that Apple spent a good amount of time talking about, but it was delayed up until now and it is now live with iOS 16.1. So now if you go into your photo settings and you go down until you see library, you will now see shared library. And when you tap on that, you will see that you have your participants right here and you could add a participant. If you tap on that, you just add them from your contacts and you're able to have them in your shared library. Now you also have shared library suggestions and also sharing from camera. If you go to sharing from camera, you have the option to share from camera, which is basically this feature right here. When you go into the camera application, you will see these little people up in the top left. If you tap on that, you could see you could toggle between your shared library and your personal library. But if you go into the settings for this feature, you have a couple of more advanced options. So you have share automatically and share manually. So it says you can choose to have the camera automatically add photos and videos to the shared library when it detects that you're with participants. So Bluetooth must be turned on to share automatically. So if you have a shared library with another user and you take a photo where it detects that both of you were there, you can have that share automatically to that specific album. And then you also have share when at home. So it says when at home, always add photos and videos from camera to the shared library, even when other participants are not there. And then if you go into the photos application, you will see that for each individual photo, you have a toggle here where you're able to move that select photo to a shared library or back to a personal library. And if you go back to your albums and you tap on the three dots up in the top right, you have the option up here for personal library, shared library, and also for the badge. So if I switch this over to my shared library, you can see it only shows the photos that I have saved to that shared library. And those are signified with those little two people glyph icon in the top right. If you just got the AirPods Pro second generation, iOS 16.1 adds a new toggle for you. So you can see that if you go into your accessibility settings for your AirPods, we now have the option for volume swipe. So for volume controls, you can now turn that off with iOS 16.1. Whereas before you did not have the option to turn that off. It just worked all the time and you could not disable it. So that is a nice new feature there added for the AirPods. And if we go to the battery section in our settings, you can see that now instead of saying battery health, it now says battery health and charging. And if we go in there, we also have an additional toggle down here for clean energy charging. So Apple says that in your region, iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available. And just like with the optimized battery charging, your phone is going to learn your daily charging routine so it can reach a full charge before you need to use it. Now, I've been using this throughout the beta stages and I've not really seen a big difference in the way my device charges, but it is there if you want to try that out. And if you do have this enabled and you're charging, you will see an alert when it's actually working, when your charging is on hold and when when the clean energy charging is scheduled to be finished. The key sharing feature has also finally launched with iOS 16.1. We've heard about this for a long time now, and this allows you to share car keys, home keys, hotel keys with another user by simply sending them to that person in a message or via WhatsApp. The wallet application also gains a savings account for Apple Daily Cash. So now instead of just having your daily cash sit here, you now will collect interest. So it's basically turning into a high yield savings account. So Apple has not revealed yet what that percentage is going to be, but you will now earn money on your Apple Pay cash that just sits there. The App Store now gets a much more concise and much more clear download menu. So for example, you could see here it shows that Minecraft is a $6.99 one-time charge. Now, if this was something else, it would show if you get charged every week, every month, or something like that. Whereas before, it was not very clear and people would get charged up you know, every month and not be knowing that they were going to be paying every month. So it's much more clear now in terms of a one-time charge or a subscription. And then we have multiple UI changes. So Apple Pay in the top left corner is bigger. We have an X on the top right corner instead of a cancel button. The application little icon right there is bigger along with the name of the application. It's bigger. And we have $6.99 one-time charge now moved up above the account name, whereas before is in the bottom right. And we also have just a much more concise little menu here. It's smaller, 
doesn't take up the full screen. It looks a little bit more modern here in 16.1. And then speaking of the App Store, if we go into our App Store right here and then go down, you will see under automatic downloads, we have a new setting here for in-app content. So now it says automatically run apps in the background to download content before you first launch them. So this is a great feature, especially for online games like Call of Duty Mobile or you know something like that. This is going to allow you to download the hotfix updates, the in-game downloads before you even launch them. So that is a nice new feature to have. You might also notice in these settings for certain third-party applications, you will have a new section that says paste from other applications. And this new permissions prompt will only appear when an app attempts to access the clipboard directly. In the books application, the reader controls now automatically hide when you start reading. If we head into the fitness application, you can see that we now have a new tab at the bottom for Apple Fitness Plus. And that is because now with 16.1, you're able to subscribe to Apple Fitness Plus with just an iPhone. You do not need an Apple Watch anymore. If we take a screenshot, we now have a new menu UI and we have new glyph icons next to it as well. So it just looks much more modern here in 16.1 versus the old school menu style in previous versions. And also you'll notice that the done button up in the top left hand corner is now more grayed out than it was previously. It's less opaque. This update also adds Matter support. So if you're not aware, Matter is a new smart home connectivity standard that's going to allow you to use, for example, Apple products products with Amazon products or Apple products with Google products. You're going to be able to use all of those now on one device. So I'll be able to have like my Amazon Alexa and my Google Nest products, for example, in my home application and use HomeKit with those devices, thanks to Matter. So of course, devices are going to have to support Matter for this to work. It's just not going to work magically with every device, but the support for Matter has been added here in 16.1. This update also reduces the strength for the keyboard haptic feedback. So if you go into your settings, sounds and haptics, and then down to keyboard feedback, if you have this enabled, where basically every time you type, you feel the haptic feedback, that has been a little bit more subdued now with this update. It's not as strong as it was previously. That could be because it was draining battery. So this could be a good fix for battery drain, fixing a little bit of the battery drain you may have been facing from this feature being so strong before. In the shortcuts application, we have a new action for get current focus. So now you can tie that in to your automations or your shortcuts. And then speaking of focus modes, if we go to our settings and go to the focus settings right here, and then we tap on the plus in the top right hand corner, and we go to any of the presets right here, you will see that we have a new graphic for them. So we have a graphic here for mindfulness focus. We have a new one for reading. So a new graphic there, and then also for work. So these graphics have all been added with 16.1. We have some very minor changes to the verbiage in our camera settings. So if you go to camera, go to format under the pro raw section, it now says pro raw photos on the main camera. So Apple now references that camera as the main camera. And if we go back down to the bottom here under macro control, Apple references that camera now as ultra wide camera. If we head into our accessibility settings and then go to touch and then to assistive touch and then to customize top level menu, you can see that the glyph icon here for the iPhone has been updated for the iPhone 14 Pro series. So you can see that we now have the dynamic island up there instead of the notch. On the lock screen, if you tap on the album artwork to make it bigger right there and then you tap out of that, you could see that before we had this weird little jiggle here on the now playing platter and that is gone now with 16.1. So now it's much smoother not only is the animation much smoother, but also you don't have that really weird wobble when you have widgets on the lock screen. That drove me crazy before. We can now fully delete the wallet application. So if you go to the wallet app and haptic press on it and go to remove app before you were only able to remove it from the home screen. There was no option there to fully delete it. But now in iOS 16.1, you are able to delete the wallet application. And if you did tap on delete application, you can see it shows to delete this app first remove any cards and settings. So Apple does make it kind of difficult to fully delete it because you do have to remove your cards first. And then if you have an iPhone 14 series, you of course, course, do have the satellite connectivity built in, which allows you to use emergency SOS via satellite. And that has been added in the code for 16.1. So there's no way to actually access this yet because Apple has not fully released it yet. They're going to release it in November, but that has been added in the code. So it will work on 16.1 when Apple pushes that out. Also, if you deleted a conversation that may have appeared in the conversations list and messages on previous versions, but now that has been fixed and you will not see 
see those deleted conversations in your conversations list anymore. We also have a fix for the dynamic island and reachability bug, where if you go into reachability, if you have an iPhone 14 Pro series, you were not able to tap on whatever was in the dynamic island, but now that has been fixed as of 16.1. There's also a fix for CarPlay not being able to connect when using a VPN application. So now you're able to use a VPN and connect to CarPlay properly. And then also if you had any issues with CarPlay randomly disconnecting, that has been fixed as well, along with the mic sensitivity bug. So that was fixed on previous versions for most people, but some still had the issue all the way up until 16.1. So if you had issues where the person on the other line could not hear you as well as they should, that should also be fixed with this update. And if you're wondering what's new in iPad OS 16.1, I do have a separate video on that. So make sure to check that out. It is up in the cards and down in the description below. All right, so now let's talk about the performance and the battery life. So the performance is definitely better here in 16.1. Just the overall smoothness and also raw performance has been improved here in 16.1. I think especially for the iPhone 13 and 14 series, those have been the main you know devices I've been testing this on. But I think across the board, you should know us a nice improvement in performance, especially when it comes to just, you know, UI elements, just everything being a little bit smoother than it was previously, along with those bug fix that I mentioned earlier. And then in terms of battery life, battery life is actually pretty solid here on iOS 16.1. I do think it's better than 16 through 16.0.3, but it's still not on par with iOS 15 yet. Do not expect iOS 15 battery life so early into the iOS 16 life cycle. Remember, iOS 16 is still new. I I mean, yeah, we are on the second, you know, big point release, but it's still new. So it's going to take some time before we get to iOS 15 levels for battery life. So I'm not saying it's terrible. I do think it's a minor improvement over the previous iOS 16 builds, but it's definitely not perfect. So now should you update to iOS 16.1? And I say absolutely, especially if you're on an iPhone 14 Pro series, just because you're gonna be able to take advantage of all of the new features, like with the dynamic island, you know, and everything like that. But no matter what device you're on, any device on iOS 16, I think the iOS 16.1 is a very solid update. So not only do we have a ton of new features with this update, but also the performance has been improved and battery life has also marginally improved over previous builds. And on top of all of that, we do also have security updates as well. So if you want to keep your device as secure as possible, there are multiple security fixes in this update as well to keep your device safe. But of course, if you want to play it safe and you like to wait, you know, maybe a few days or a week after the software has been released just to see if any problems arise, you can do that. But you know, I've been using the RC build here for a while and no major issues have jumped out at me just yet. But if you are that person who wants to play it safe, just know that I will have a follow-up review coming here on the channel later on this weekend. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So looking forward, we could see an iOS 16.1.1 sometime in November. So I could see a 16.1.1 coming in November. Now, if you're on the beta program, if you're a developer or a public beta tester, we could be seeing iOS 16.2 beta 1 very, very soon within the week we could see 16.2 beta one. Now the final release of 16.2 is most likely not coming until December would be my guess, but we could see that sometime in late November at the very earliest. But I would expect to see a 16.1.1 as the next public release for those that are not beta testers. And again, that should come sometime in November. And if you wanna see the exact moment that an iOS release comes out, make sure to follow me on Twitter. I do tweet out every time a new iOS version is released or expected to be released. I get those out, of course, a lot quicker than making a video here on YouTube. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 16 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.